here of the Climate Leadership Action Plan, or as I call it, the CLAP. The CLAP is uh, not like by Albertans. <laughs> And it's going to cost, the original clap was going to cost us $3 billion. But after rolling over and surrendering to Ottawa, it will cost us $5 billion a year. The biggest tax increase in the history of Alberta. And Rachel Motley tells us that this tax must be imposed on us so that Albertans will make better choices. No, 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 there's something to this. In 2019, Albertans will make a better choice because of the carbon tax. But rolling over and surrendering, surrendering to Ottawa is fueling Western alienation again. We are feeling separated from our representatives in Ottawa. We feel that we don't have a government on our side. The last time we had a Trudeau, at least we had a government in Alberta that stood up to him. Instead of caving to Ottawa, we should not be rolling over. We should be demanding a better deal on equalization instead. That's what we should be doing. Now, uh, a lot of people have different feelings about Donald Trump and some of the promises he's made. Uh, but one of them is to build a wall. Now, there's not many people I want to keep out of Alberta and the West. But if we did have a wall, there's only one thing I would want to keep out, and that's Justin Trudeau. But we do have a wall already, friends. We have a wall. His name's Brad. There are important decisions facing Conservatives in Alberta right now. Very big decisions that will affect the future and the history of this province. But I am an Albertan, I'm a Conservative, and I'm a Wild Roser in that order. But there is a growing movement from Britain to the United States to Alberta of people who are doing what they're told they're not allowed to do who are doing what the media, what the elites on the left and the right, in the unions and in big business, are telling them they're not allowed to do. And they're saying, we want our own freedom. We're going to make our own decisions. Alberta is counting on us. We must be principled, and I believe we must be politically incorrect. Thomas Paine, the American revolutionary Thomas Paine says he who dares not offend, cannot be honest. We must always be honest, no matter how much the media squeal about it. I am running to be the finance minister of Alberta. But we must not merely defeat the NDP. We must destroy the legacy of socialism in this province, root and branch. We have a mission. Albertans, we have a mission. We must put Alberta first. We must stand by our convictions. We must be fearless. Our mission requires that we show strong leadership in the face of adversity. Let's put Alberta first. Stand with me. Stand with the Wild Rose. Let's make Alberta great again, folks. Derek Fildebrand, ladies and gentlemen. Derek Fildebrand. Just giving her. Just giving her. That's great. Uh, I am now going to call upon Derek's caucus colleague, Leela Ahir.
And while I do, I'd also like to tell our bucket brigade to get ready to muster, because after Leela's speech, we'll say how we pay our bills Alberta style, not CBC style. But in the meantime, Leela Ahir, MLA from Chestermere, Walking View. That's right. I think I used to live in that riding a long time ago. Come on up here, Leela. Great to see you. Thank you. Wow, wow, wow. I'm, I'm fighting with Bernard Hancock over the hairdo, so Bernard, you just keep that hair growing. That's, that's spectacular. Um, I do want to say on behalf of Brian Jean that he's listening to you. He is here with you. And Derek and I, Rick, are you still here? Rick Strangman is also here at the back. He's our Shadow Minister for Agriculture. We are listening to you. We are so proud to be here with you. This is magnificent. And I, um, I, I cannot believe the amount of hours that we've spent in the legislature right now pushing this government to listen to us. And let me tell you, we are pushing them an extra two and a half weeks into Christmas to make sure that they hear everything from us about everything that they're doing, about bad policy, and how that's impacting every single one of you. So know that in your hearts we are there with you every single step of the way. Thank you. We're truly proud, truly proud to be able to do that. You know, there's numbers out there about 10% unemployment, and we are not just a statistic. We are not. We are families, neighbors, friends, brothers, sisters, and we are crying desperately for help from this government, and all we get back from them is more bad policy and justification, and there's absolutely no justification ever that can justify what they are doing to our province right now. You know, I am one of two conservative women on our side, and let me tell you, for Angela and I, we are loud and proud, and we are squeaky wheels, and we will hold them to account. And on behalf of the rest of our caucus, we are so proud to be with these incredible men, let me tell you. Why? Why are we penalizing our environmentally responsible Albertan industries? Why? Why are we moving production out of this province? If the government actually cares about environmentals, we should be producing here. We should be upgrading here. They are taking jobs out of this jurisdiction and they're sending product to other jurisdictions. That is called carbon leakage, my friends. That means for every single time we don't produce here, it is produced somewhere else, less ethically, less environmentally, and to the detriment of our own people in this province. We are a magnificent example of how it's done right, and don't ever forget that. No matter what they say, we are the best at what we do, and we know it, and we have to say it loud and proud every single day, and not just send a message to Edmonton, not just in Canada, but to the world, because they are tainting our message everywhere in this world. So it's up to us, folks. This is the start, but is not the end. We have seen attacks on our energy and agriculture sectors. You know, every time we're in the legislature and everything is brought up about how we need to change the way that we live as Albertans, that is a slap in the face to every single Albertan that has built this province from the ground up. We will not stand for it. We know that this is the largest tax grab in Alberta. And it is a tax on everything. Groceries, hockey, music lessons, your very lives, everything. And for every moment that it is justified, it takes away things from what Albertan families are being able to do for each other. And we are the most philanthropic people in the world. We give back to our neighbors. We take care of each other. It is the most beautiful part of this province. And as a volunteer and a person who's worked in the nonprofits, I know what you do for each other. And I'm so proud of you. Yeah. I was devastated 
absolutely devastated to see on Friday when, the pre when Premier Wall was fighting in Ottawa against the carbon tax. And our Premier was championing the carbon tax. I was appalled. I didn't ever think in my lifetime, in our lifetime, that I would ever see an Alberta Premier give Ottawa a free ride to tax Albertans. And our energy sector, it's ridiculous. And you know, my, my father is a chemical engineer, he emigrated here in 1963. And I used to spend time with him out in Devon and all these places and in the little, the little portables with, with all of those fellows out there. And, and you know, we've seen Alberta bounce back. We understand viscerally what it takes to bring our province back. And it's why we're here together today. It's why I'm so proud to rally together for a better future for our province, to make sure that we create something fantastic, magnificent, and incredible for our future generations. But it starts right now. Yeah. You, every single member in this room, and every single member who I talk to, and everyone who comes into our office, and the thousands of people that I've had the privilege of reaching out to, you are our inspiration. Please know that. We listen to you, we want you to talk, we want your letters. Please don't stop. Please know that we are inspired every single moment that we spend up at the legislature. And I want to tell you one other thing. We will fight this carbon tax. We will. We will abolish it provincially, and if it ends up being that Ottawa brings down this carbon tax on us, $2,500 every year extra on our families, we will seek every legal option possible to fight Ottawa and this carbon tax. Every legal option. The carbon tax does not reduce GHGs. The carbon tax takes millions of dollars out of charities. It takes away from food banks, from homeless centers, and so many other, shame on the NDP for doing this. Our industry in this province is the economic driver of Canada. These are real people and real stories. And Alberta is the best place in the world to live. Is, yes. Is this the legacy we want to leave for our children and our grandchildren? No. This government is ignoring the needs of our citizens. Albertans do not want this carbon tax. We do not need this carbon tax. We will stop the NDP carbon tax. Axe the tax. Axe the tax. God bless. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Leela Ahir. Thank you very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if I worked for the CBC, I would have $1.5 billion a year from Justin Trudeau. That's how much they get, $1.5 billion a year from Trudeau. So I can assure you that I would not be permitted to host a rally for Albertans against a carbon tax, because then I would be cut off. I would not be independent, it was we are as a crowdfunded grassroots organization. We learned just last week a uh, surprise from some memoirs of Tony Blair's top aide. I, I just got to tell you this. I don't know if you saw my program on it. Tony Blair's spin doctor, Alistair Campbell, wrote a memoir. It's all about Tony Blair. But he just mentions a joke that, or a conversation that Jean Chrétien had with Tony Blair about 15 years ago. Mentioned it in passing in this book. Jean Chrétien was bragging to Tony Blair that when Stockwell Day was the leader of the Canadian Alliance and was talking about referendums, and if you could get 3% of the population to sign a petition, that would go to a referendum. In this memoir of this Tony Blair staffer, Jean Chrétien boasts to Tony Blair that he got a TV station to make a joke to say, let's get 
a referendum, let's get a petition to have Stockwell Day change his name to Doris Day. And they laughed and laughed and laughed, and it's a pretty funny anecdote. But the author of this, Alistair Campbell, the, the spin doctor for Tony Blair, didn't know what he was revealing. See, it wasn't just a TV station. It was the CBC, the state broadcaster. Jean Chrétien directed the CBC to execute part of the liberal campaign plan. Jean Chrétien directed the CBC, or in the language of Alistair Campbell, got a TV station. He didn't get anything. He ordered the state broadcaster to attack his rival, and not just through the news, which they do, but through a comedy show. I mean, you would think that a comedian would come up with a joke. And, and I, I um, sent a message to Rick Mercer. I said, is this true? He said, well, I wrote the joke. Yeah, I know you wrote it, Rick, because the government told you to. And for 15 years, all of us thought that was just a pretty rough joke, and I guess you've got to take jokes because it's just a joke. No, 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 no. That was a liberal campaign trick paid for by you, the taxpayer, ordered by Jean Chrétien, that both Chrétien and Rick Mercer would have taken to their grave were it not for this accidental disclosure by Alistair Campbell. Tell the CBC. Isn't that the truth? And I should tell you, I just checked my Twitter. It's a habit, I'm sorry. And I see that the CBC has done extensive interviews with the NDP Dirty Tricks Brigade outside. And do you think that tonight's coverage, a thousand people inside for two hours, or paid Council of Canadians, NDP front group, raging granny, dirty tricksters, who do you think will dominate the CBC's coverage tonight? Who do you think will be on the CBC tonight? Will they give coverage to the NDP dirty tricksters, or the thousand people in here against the carbon tax? You know the answer, because their budget depends on it. $1.5 billion they get a year and there is a word for the oldest profession, and I won't say it because this is a family-friendly event. And so, my friends, we pay our way. Unlike those NDP dirty tricksters, we start our meetings by saying, Oh, Canada. They forgot about that in their dirty tricks. And unlike the CBC, we pay our own way. And if you would like to help us, Cover the cost of today's rally, please do. Now, I know there are people here who are hurting, who are unemployed, for whom times are tough. That's fine. Don't worry about it. But if you're someone who has a few extra bucks or even some change, please put it in the Bucket Brigade. I would now like to ask our Bucket Brigade to start circling around. The cost of today's rally, including the facility, the PA system, and the security, is in excess of $14,000. If you want to chip in Five or ten bucks, that would go a long way to covering the costs. Now, I know that the CBC will mock this. I know that the CBC will laugh about this. They always do. They'll call it grubby. Because the CBC reach right into your pocket without your permission every year for $1.5 billion. They're much more seemly about it, aren't they? So if you believe that it's important to have an antidote, a counterweight, the other side of the story, to the government journalists and the government comedians at the CBC, then please take a minute and chip into the bucket brigade that's going around. Sheila Gunn-Reed has a bucket and others. Boy, I'm mad at the CBC. They are a disgrace. They are a disgrace, the CBC. You know, I want to tell you one more thing while the bucket brigade is circulating. I want to tell you one more thing about the CBC that they do, and it, it makes me furious. You know, the CBC hates coal-fired power plants, at least the ones in Canada. They don't much mention the ones in the States or China or India. So in their stories that the CBC demonizes Brad Wall or Alberta Coal, the picture they use, and I've caught them doing this twice, they use a picture of a Chinese coal-fired power plant. They do that because the Alberta coal-fired power plants are so clean, you don't even know it's a power plant. You can't see CO2. There's no emissions from these. It's the cleanest coal in the world, the cleanest coal-fired power plant in the world. There's a picture of it right, of one right there. 
But the CBC, to make their case, the clean one is the coal-fired power plant. The CBC, to make their case, literally uses pictures of Chinese coal-fired power plants to demonize Alberta. Isn't that a disgrace? Now, I got to tell you, I would normally kick the NDP out the same way we kicked those NDP dirty tricksters out, because they're the same people. I mean, the NDP are really just liberals and new Democrats with a press credential. But I'm not going to kick them out for one reason only. And it's because I want them to see some of our next speakers. We've saved some of the best for last. I'm talking about you, Chad. Now, before I proceed, is Prem Singh here? Is Prem here? I don't see Prem. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start things up again, and I'm going to call upon the speaker who last week in Edmonton gave the most powerful speech of all. He's not a professional speaker. He's not a politician. He's not running for anything. He's an oil field dad who started a website by that name, Oil Field Dads. And we heard Bernard Ruffne uh, Bernard Ruffneck uh, Hancock speak from the heart about what it's like try trying to make a go of it, and it's tough. But for Chad Miller, it's not just tough for him. He's got a family. He's got to put bread on the table for. He's got to pay for the kids. And I have to say, I came to that rally with a spring in my step. And after I heard Chad, I had a tough time of it. And that was just hearing it. Imagine living it. I had a tough time even hearing it. And I want the CBC, those disgusting government-paid smear merchants who degraded and scolded 3,000 Albertans, I want the CBC to see this if those cowards are still here and not out there with the NDP and the raging grannies and the dirty tricksters. You CBC cowards, I want you to catch every minute of this. I know it's going to end up on the editing room floor, but I just want you personally to see the story of Alberta. Chad Miller. Oil field dad, come up here and speak from the heart. Thank you, thank you. Good afternoon, my fellow Albertans. My name is Chad Miller. I am a founder and a creator of an oil field group called Oil Field Dads. And I just want to say thank you to the Rebel Media for giving me that platform today to speak on behalf of many struggling Albertans out there. I've learned that something sometimes speak in your mind, even before thinking about it, can have some severe consequences, especially in the news and social media nowadays. Pieces of stories and speeches can be picked apart and edited to make things sound so appalling and fictitious. It's very hard to say anything anymore if people are afraid of a offending anyone for fear of being labeled and chastised for speaking their minds for what they feel in their hearts. You know, you and I can read the same book, regardless of religion, fact, or law, and you and I can pull very different things out of that to support your morals and beliefs, to better defend your arguments. It's just the way we are. So I suppose I must be prepared for the world problem solvers of how I could have, should have, and may should have not have. So here I go. I grew up on a farm outside of Rocky Mountain House, west of Red Deer. And like most farm kids, I had to ride a bus to and from half hour. I grew up with chores, consisting of feeding the horses, cows and chickens and pigs. We weren't allowed to play until our outside and inside chores were done. We had to respect our elders. Our playtime consisted of riding horses, hunting and fishing on our property, where our parents taught us the responsi responsibilities and life skills, taught us how to use firearms safely, and only shoot what we had to eat, not to waste food. We were taught the art of canning, growing food out of our garden, and they taught us how to run farm equipment at a very young age. They also taught us how to drive vehicles in the field so we could help out on the farm more. When calving season came around, we took shifts in the middle of the night to help to see if there's any cows having complications and often miss school sometimes. You see, I grew up on hard work ethics and respect everyone. Treat people how you want to be treated, right? Isn't that the golden rule? Yeah. My father would leave in the winter months to go work in the oil patch. He started his own company, and that's what Alberta's known for, is entrepreneurship. Yeah. He made a go of it in the oil field, and I admired my father for his ambitions. 
to stick it out and provide not only for his family, but also helping all their families by employing them as well. My parents and Alberta have given me that freedom to live the dream of independence and provided me that sense of self-worth which have allowed me to achieve a lifestyle of stability and financial gain. The values and morals that I have today may differ from others out there for their own personal quest of fulfillment in their lives, but I'm okay with that. Like others, we have the same values and morals and beliefs as myself, but we've had to suck it up and roll it with the punches. We've been ignored for far and long enough. We've been kicked and stomped and beaten down by the people that don't want to look at things from both sides carefully or equally. They haven't sat down over a cup of coffee with the people that have been affected by certain policies and ideologies that everyone has been affected for. The light, the, like the carbon tax, like Bill 6, maybe sure they did sit down with a few, and maybe a few of them bought into it. But that's just it. It's just they were sold on it, just like that vacuum salesman that comes to your door. Whether you need it or not, they sell it to you. You know, I bought one myself. I've been. It, does, <laughs> it doesn't matter if you have Girl Scouts coming to your door or energy regulators. But my point is, is people sell things to us every single day, whether, you're not, whether you want it or not, whether we need it or not, be it TV ads, social media, Facebook, carbon tax, levies. We've all been sold on things. Subconsciously, we sell ourselves every single day. The moment you wake up in the morning, for what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat, how you're going to act. I had to even sell myself to my wife to get her to like me. <laughs> the key is to know whether or not you're being sold something that is someone else. At, le at the very least, give the people a chance to vote on it. Don't just ram policies down their throat because you think it's the best interest <laughs> of the province or nation. You may have the power to do so, but that doesn't make it right. Exactly. Remember, the people gave you the power to get in in the first place. Well, I didn't. Do us right and do us what's best in the interest of the people. Let them vote on it. Let the people have a referendum on major bills and taxes being passed. You've already spent millions of our tax dollars advocating for something that the majority doesn't want in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> Implementing a carbon tax without a proper economic assessment doesn't hold merit. And I might as well save my breath to cool my soup to tell you otherwise. So let's vote on it. Quit holding that trophy of winning that election over our, he over our heads and let the people help you run this province instead of the other way around. Yeah. I can liken this to the frustration of we Westerners when, it get, when the federal election comes around. By the time the polls close in the East, it doesn't matter who we vote for is because the, spe the, because the East has already spoken. But it still doesn't stop me from voting. Truthfully, I think we should have swing provinces based on the population of Canada, just like the states. Yeah. But that's just my uneducated opinion. Yeah. Make no mistake, the people did vote the NDP and the liberal, liberal government in. But without listening to the people constantly by ways of reform and certain bills and laws that affect their way of life drastically, your trophy of office will be passed around just like that participation award at the next election. <laughs> See, I'm a struggling oil field dad, guys. I don't do this much. I created a group uh, on Facebook that helps people come together because we've been affected by, by it like everyone else. It's camaraderie and uh, compassion for each other in these hard times. You see, I'm grateful that people that are, are coming to my group to show support and networking. It's not a political bashing group, but it allows people to uh, network with each other to try to find work out there in these hard times. See, I was invited last month to a roundtable discussion by the Conservative government to discuss the impact of the Alberta job crisis. I was honored to take part as a member, because as no member of parliament have ever took time to ask me anything besides to vote for him. I was able to, I was able to present my story of hardship 
And then I presented this. This is a lien on my house for unpaid taxes. And then I pulled out my wallet, what I had left in my wallet. That was what was between me and my family starvation. And that's reality, folks. Many have lost homes, many have lost jobs, many have lost loved ones to suicide, many have had families separated by financial despair, and no one in the government seems to give a damn. But after six months of recession turned depression, and hundreds of thousands of people that lost their job and EI has run out, for those who could collect, by the way. Us small self-employed contractors could not collect, but we're throwing them into the statistics of the unemployment in the province. With an already hurting, Alberta, already hurting economy and by introducing this new bill and carbon tax to further demise of province are tumbling, we are tumbling further down this hallway with no end in sight. Now don't get me wrong, what happened this year with the U.S. elections and with the approval of two or three out of four pipelines, it brings a spike in the oil prices and hopefully for a better new year. But it's still not enough to commit, not enough of a commitment right now to bring us all out of this current financial state at the moment. And lastly, guys, for all those protesting against fossil fuels, don't forget to turn your furnaces down this winter because it's a cold one. Is that oil, that oil field byproduct that you're protesting against is what's keeping your family warm, so bundle up. But what do I know? I'm just an oil field dad. Yeah. Chad Miller, oil field dads. Chad Miller. I admire how you keep your hope, how you keep your dignity. On behalf of everyone here, I thank you for being the man you are. Chad Miller. Well, when I was getting ready to come out here, a friend of mine in Toronto named Faith Goldie said, Ezra, I want to come out and say a few words. I said, what are you talking about? She said, let me come. Faith Goldie. You know, y'all could do with a lot more global warming in this city. <laughs> it's damn cold over here. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm a Toronto girl, born and raised. Uh, I've always said that Calgary is my spirit animal, and I feel like we are in the rebel heartland right now. It is so great to be here. I come today with a warning. Eco-socialists turned my province from a manufacturing superpower into a debt-encumbered Eurostate. You know, I, I've got to share a small little anecdote. I know it's the end of the day, and I'm the last speaker, and I'm going to try to keep my stuff short, not Ezra, you know, short, uh, <laughs> actual short. Um, I was on the airplane the other day and I was coming back from Florida and there was a gentleman beside me and it became very clear by about hour two of our flight that he was a Donald Trump Republican, okay? He was hardcore. Wait, wait, it's not, <laughs> it's, it's not the end of the story yet. So, so, so this guy's like, yeah, carbon tax, it's a scheme. Yeah, you know, we're going to build some pipelines. Things are going to go great. And then I asked him, so what are you doing flying up to uh, Ontario? And this is after he had told me that he was trained in the legal profession and that he was making a lot of money as a lawyer. And I said, so what are you doing coming up to, to, to Toronto? He said, well, I now work in green energy. I said, what? He said, there has been no better time to work in green energy, and there is no better jurisdiction than Ontario. So, uh, roll over, getting bent over, uh, say what you want, okay? There are people who are willing to take advantage of um, the corporate welfare that our government is, is, is handing out that is frankly just code for our tax dollars. 
I won't bore you with too, too many numbers, but I want to give you just a few little factoids. Because of the anti-science, radical environmental policies of Kathleen Wynne government, um, which came on the heels of Dalton McGuinty's government, all of which was led by a brain trust, uh, who at the helm was Gerald Butts, and we all know... He, 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 was, he was behind the Green Energy Act, Ontario's uh, Green Energy Act, and he is now um, chief puppeteer to our prime minister. Because of Gerald Butts and the Kathleen Wynne, Dalton McGuinty governments, Ontario now has the largest debt out of any sub-national jurisdiction in the world. We are now the mo we now have the most expensive electricity in all of North America because of green energy. And 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 to quote the, the, the NDP nannies that were in the corner, you know you know what they were chanting? Suck it up. So Ontario has sucked it up. We rolled right over. And that's why right now I am among the median Ontarian who is by definition living in energy poverty. 10% of my income goes towards the government's green energy initiatives. But just this week, and I think Derek mentioned it in passing, we found out that tens of thousands of Ontarians are spending 30% of their income on electricity. 30% of your paycheck now goes back to the government so that way your baby doesn't have to freeze. And I say that quite seriously because I have a baby in my house. My little nephew were, uh, lives with us. So when Kathleen Wynne tells the great province, once great province of Ontario, to put on a sweater, I'm sorry. There's a one-year-old in here. That's just not the only option. I'm turning on my heat, even if it's going to cost me 30%. And you know, Derek mentioned something about this being about socialism and we need to uproot it. I'd encourage any of you to look at how so many of the American schools of socialism from the Fabian School, the Frankfurt School, Saul Alinsky, uh, Antonio Gramsci, talked years ago about co-opting environmentalism and the environmental movement. And their plan was simple. They are going to demonize the cheaper forms of energy, like coal and homegrown ethical oil. They demonize those things and then they bring in something that is a nationalized product at a premium. And that is exactly what's happening to Ontario. It is socialism, it is the state robbing our money, and the only jobs that you can get are the ones that they have created through cartels, like cap and trade, frankly, and, and making winners and losers out of corporate welfare. You know, I, I say this as a Christian, uh, I believe in the separation of church and state, but right now, the high priestesses of the false church of climate change have taken over our state. They have taken over our state in, in Ontario, they have taken over our state legislature in Alberta, and now they have taken over our state in Ottawa at a federal level. We have literally, this is more than a, a pincer maneuver. When you look at those three jurisdictions alone, what we have is an unholy alliance. However, an unholy trinity, if you will. However, and I say this as an Ontarian who's, who's whose province did roll over. They weren't doing this when cap and trade was introduced. They weren't doing this after the Green Energy Act was passed. You here, folks, are an inspiration. And at, um, at, at, at the dawn of a new Trudeau day, where we're talking about a national carbon tax, this movement has got to succeed. Absolutely has to. I believe that beginning with this movement right here in Alberta, we can dethrone Kathleen Wynne, we can dethrone Rachel Notley, and we can dethrone Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. I'll leave you with this. The whole country is watching you. Do not stop rallying. Do not stop chanting. Be because by God, it is the only way that we are going to make Alberta great again. Thank you so very much.
Ladies and gentlemen, Faith Goldie. It's 4.34, we're running a little long and I wanna wrap it up. We started a little bit late because we had so many people streaming in and I see some people have had to go. I wanna thank every single one of you, a thousand people strong, who came here and stood for two and a half hours to speak truth to power, to tell Rachel Notley that our mere words here may not have the power to stop her from doing what she's doing, but it will make a mark. It will put on notice that we do not accept it. She does not have the consent of the governed. And it's a message to other Canadians that you can get together. You're not alone. Don't believe the lying media. Most Canadians don't want a carbon tax. That, that there are some people, and I don't care if Peter Mansbridge and his million dollar year salary calls you deplorable, Chad, you're the best man I know. The husband of the environment minister called us pigs last week. If that's the case, then I'm for the pigs. I want you to go home and I want to tell you, I want you to tell everyone you know the story of what you heard today. I want you to tell them about Chad and about Bernard. I want you to tell them about everyone who spoke because I am worried that they will not learn that from the enemy media who are here today, the partisan media. And I believe that you have to tell that story. We have videoed the entire event. It's been live streaming. You can show that to people. It's on YouTube. You can find it very quickly at the rebel.media. So for folks who couldn't make it today, and it was amazing, so many did in minus 20 weather, they can see the entire thing and fast forward over my speeches <laughs> at the rebel.media. It's going to be on YouTube. It'll be up there forever. On behalf of the rebel.media, I want to thank you. You are our lifeblood. I don't have a sugar daddy named Justin Trudeau. I don't have front groups paid for by Rachel Notley like those hecklers and protesters that naturally the CBC gravitated to in the halls. All I have is you. You have built the rebel.media, and we will be loyal to you. Thank you for your time today. Keep fighting for freedom. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.